the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper of God. You've seen the title. Self-satisfaction is a sin. Self-satisfaction is a sin. Yes, we're going to get right into it, brothers and sisters. The Lord God commanded his people from the Old Testament to the present day that we were never to forget the 40 years of God's care in the wilderness. For 40 years, God took care of his people in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. You can read about this journey of God's people of Israel journey through the wilderness in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You can read about the Israelites' 40-year journey in the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land. Once again, we were commanded by the Almighty to never forget the 40 years of God's care of his people in the wilderness. For 40 years, God did something every day for his people for 40 years. Also, I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, God made himself visible to the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. Oh, he sure did. He showed himself in a pillar of fire, in a pillar of a cloud. He showed himself in signs and wonders and miracles when he sent the ten plagues on Egypt, on Pharaoh. When he took the blood of a lamb and put it on the doorposts of his people so that when the death angel passed over, it seen the blood and nobody in the homes of the Israelites died. He parted the Red Sea. Yes. And brought his people across on dry land. They weren't walking in wet sand or quick sand. It was dry. God did that. And for 40 years, in the daytime, he led his people down a road in a form of a pillar of a cloud. And that night he did it with a pillar of fire. And he used that pillar of fire to protect his people at night. Yes, God made himself visible. They could see his glory. They could see his power. They even heard his voice voice. He even came down on Mount Sinai and spoke to the people like he would speak to Moses. Hallelujah. The Lord God commanded his people from the Old Testament to the New Testament all the way to this present day to never forget how he took care of us for 40 years in the wilderness. Amen. However, when it comes to the matter of how Yahweh provided and cared for his people during their wilderness experience, there is a prayer recorded in the book of Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah was a man of prayer 
But the prayer written in Nehemiah chapter 9, starting at the 6th verse, which happens to be the longest recorded prayer in the entire Bible, was prayed by Levites, not Nehemiah. In this prayer, those Levites mention a number of things from Israel's past and how the Lord had dealt with them. But I want to center your attention on what the Levites said about God's care for Israel in the wilderness. So let's listen to God's word and learn how the Israelites conducted themselves. But I'm going to hold off on the ways in which God blessed them. And let's look at the Israelites' response to God's kindness and care. The title of this message is Self-Satisfaction is a Sin. In this prayer, we find that the children of Israel acted proudly. When you, when you go to your Bibles and you read um, Nehemiah chapter 9, start at the 6th verse to verse 38. And in this prayer, we find the children of Israel acted proudly. They were stiff-necked and stubborn. This is how they responded to God's kindness. They were stiff-necked and stubborn. They refused to obey God. They were not mindful of his wonders and miracles and power. They rebelled. They made, they melted their gold, all their gold jewelry. They melted it and with that, they formed a, a calf, a golden calf. They made an idol. And they said that that idol was their God that rescued them from Egypt. God seeing his people ungrateful and their self-willed hearts, God could have abandoned them immediately, but he didn't. God loved his people and longed to take care of their needs, even though they were undeserving of such goodness, just like we are today. Now let's look at God's care of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. He protected them from other nations. He gave them true laws to live by. He gave them bread from heaven for their hunger. He gave them water from the rock when they were thirsty. Uh huh. He gave them a pillar of cloud to lead them on the road during the day. He gave them a pillar of fire to show them light at night. He gave them his spirit to instruct them. He kept on giving manna and water. Every day. The clothes they wore, they wore didn't wear out. Their feet didn't swell. God's people were blessed. For 40 years in the desert. God's people were blessed. Then as they are now. Why would a holy God put up with Israel's obstinate behavior. When I say obstinate, I'm, I'm saying they're stubborn behavior. Why would a holy God put up with the children of Israel's stubborn behavior and keep the windows of heaven open, pouring out blessings upon blessings upon them? What the Levites said in in this prayer about God's unchanging character was revealed. God was ready to forgive them. He was gracious and merciful. He was abundant in kindness. 
He had manifold mercies. And he is the great and awesome God of power and glory. As you read the prayer in Nehemiah chapter 9, starting at verses 6 to 38, you will learn that God ultimately punished his people when they refused to turn away from their rebellious ways. But God's love for his people did not change. For 40 years, God sustained his people in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. Jesus promised that if we will first seek God's kingdom and righteousness, the things we need will be added to what we have. Hallelujah. God told his people in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. I want to read something to you. Chapter 8, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, let's look at verse 2. God says, remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Did you hear that? I want, I want to compare Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, with Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. Now, I just read to you that God said that we do not live by bread alone, but we live by every word that comes from the mouth of God, right? Go to Matthew chapter four. Let's see what Jesus says in Matthew. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told Satan, No. The scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, there's, there's two things when we compare, I want to compare this Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 4 to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 and 3. The Israelites were led by God into the wilderness for 40 years. Right? To be tested as well. God said he did that to test them to see if they will obey his word. Now Jesus, now the Israelites are led into the wilderness by God. God is spirit. Amen. They were led into the wilderness by God to be tested and tried for 40 years. Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tested and tempted by the devil for 40 days. Uh-huh. Mm. The Holy Spirit's purpose 
for leading Jesus into the wilderness to be tested, which is to be tempted, the Holy Spirit was allowing us to see Jesus fulfill that 40 year journey in the wilderness in 40 days in the wilderness. Oh yes, oh yes. Notice the similarities. Notice the similarities. Jesus endures 40 days of fasting and praying in the wilderness and the devil came to tempt him to keep him from obeying God. But Satan fails. The spirit led him there to be tested and to fulfill what the Israelites could not fulfill in 40 years. Making Jesus our perfect redeemer. When Jesus told the devil, no, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, he was fulfilling a purpose greater than his flesh. Jesus understood that the flesh profits nothing. Rather, it's our spirit that matters. Hallelujah. Understand this. The devil wanted Jesus to turn those stones into bread to satisfy his flesh. The title of this message is Self-Satisfaction is a Sin. Satan wanted Jesus to turn those stones into bread to satisfy his flesh. If the devil could strengthen the flesh he knows it will weaken the spirit. As we live by physical food to sustain our bodies, we are also created to sustain our spirit with the word of God. As you can see in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, we are more than just physical beings. What made us come alive was the life God breathed into us. Since our source of life is from God, bread alone isn't enough to sustain us. In Genesis chapter 2, the it says that when God made man, right, he blew his breath into man's nostrils and man became a living soul, a living being. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus is telling us we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Look at John chapter 4. I'm about to wrap it up. John chapter 4. Look at verse 34. 31 I mean. John chapter 4. Let's look at verse 31. Meanwhile the disciples were using Jesus. I mean were urging Jesus. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Verse 31. Luke, John chapter 4 verses 31. To 34. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Until this day, don't nobody know nothing about this food. We don't see it as food. The disciples are wondering, did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Did you hear that? Jesus says, my nourishment, my food 
comes from doing the will of God. That's what it said in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 and 3. That's what it said in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 4. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the words that come from the mouth of God, we have to obey and do the Lord's will. God is requesting something from us. And Jesus says that his nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent him and from finishing his work. That's right. This is God's, this is, this is the food that Jesus is telling the disciples about that they know nothing about. Look at John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. What does it say? The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplish, accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Hallelujah. Look at um, John chapter 6. Look at verse 27. What does it say? But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. To do what? To give you eternal life. To give you this food, which is his word. To give you this food, which is his body. Look at John chapter 6. Look at verse 32. What does it say? Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, look at verses 48 and 51. What does it say? Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I will offer so the world may live is my flesh. You know, we are told to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God, right? You hear that? But a lot of us, are living by every word that comes from a mouth of a liar. A lot of us are living or, or have lived by every word that has come from the mouth of a liar, that has come from the mouth of a narcissist, that has come from a mouth of an abuser, that has come from a mouth of a jealous person. A lot of us have lived by every word that has come from the mouth of a hater. How does that feel? When you live your life by every word that has come from a mouth of a liar. You're constantly trying to prove yourself innocent. A lot of us have lived by every word that has come from a mouth, from the mouth of a slanderer. 
But the only way to live in these days, now and forevermore, brothers and sisters, is to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Do you hear me? Remember, self-satisfaction is a sin. Satan is telling most of us today, if you are a child of God, turn these stones to bread. Make it happen if you are a child of God. Turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said, no. Man will not live by bread alone. It is written. We shall not live by bread alone, but we will live by every word that comes from the mouth of of God. Do you hear me? God commanded us to never forget the 40 years and how he took care of the children of Israel in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. A lot of us, we find ourselves like the children of Israel you don't have the food, you don't have the clothes, you don't have the water. You don't have the necessities to sustain your life. And so you find a way to do it yourself. You don't call on God, you don't trust God. You sell drugs, you sell your body, you lie, you steal, you write bad checks. You steal other people's identity to get money. You get into a credit card scam, scheme. You prostitute yourselves. You do whatever it takes to turn those stones into bread. I want you to take some time today. Let this message just let it just sit in your mind. Think about it. God is reminding you look, I took care of people for 40 years in a desert. What makes you think I can't take care of you in an apartment, at your relative's house, in a shelter, in a tent? I can take care of you, says the Lord. I can take care of you. God has been taking care of me all of my life. And he let me know that I don't have to turn stones into bread anymore. I don't even have to fall into that temptation of satisfying my own needs. God promised he would take care of you. Let him take care of you. Call on him. Tell him what you need. He going to lead you to the right place. But God will never lead you into sin. He'll never have you go and steal, sell your body, sell drugs, rob somebody. God will never have you do that. 
The Bible says that God would lead none of his people into temptation. But God, he will supply your needs, brothers and sisters. You have to seek him. Amen. Richard Luke Jr. has a video. You guys know him. It's 14 minutes long. The title of his video is Let's Return to Godliness. Amen. Let's return to godliness where we depend on God. Amen. Hey, listen, God bless you. I love you. And remember... Self-satisfaction is a sin. Also, remember this. We are to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We are not to live by bread alone, but we are to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God, brothers and sisters. Live by it, trust it, believe it, and it will come to pass. See, God knows those who are his. Your faith will bring forth your blessing. So if you're just giving God lip service, you're going to starve to death. God knows I'm you giving them lip service. You, you don't have no faith. See, God is so wise. You can't fool God. You, you can't use God to get what you want and then throw him away the next day. It ain't going to happen. So if you ain't being healed, if you ain't your needs ain't being supplied, God knows those who are his. Trust me. Trust me. Deep down in your soul, you know you ain't done with sin. Even though God said, I forgive all your transgressions and your sins, I will remember no more. Even though God said that, you still won't stop sinning. It's time to stop. If God can take care of, and he doesn't want you to forget that he took care of over a million people people in the wilderness for 40 years. Their feet didn't swell. Their clothes wasn't tethered. And they never went hungry or thirsty. Never. They didn't live around goats, sheep, and animals. No. When they wanted meat, God blew a wind from the east and blew all types of quail. All these quails came into the camp, millions of them. They didn't have, they were in the desert. There was no, no wheat growing in the desert where they can grind it up and make flour and make bread. No, God gave them bread from heaven. They will wake up in the morning and these little round wafers like disc things would be all on the ground. All around them. Enough for them to eat. That was the bread of heaven. They called it manna. They didn't live by a river with fresh water. God gave them water from the rock. Every day. For 40 years, God sustained them in the wilderness. They, did, they, they, they were not in want of anything. They were lacking nothing. Their clothes were still fresh. For 40 years, their sandals weren't even worn out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And their feet were not swollen. Brothers and sisters, this is the true worshiper of God. Remember, find out whose, whose words are you living by. Amen? If you've been living by the, 
the words that are coming out of our mouth of a liar, stop and start living by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I love you. This is the true worshiper of God, and I'll see you soon.